The Chilcotin River landslide, guys, that hits home in British Columbia, Canada. And that landslide was massive, massive than all the other landslides that happened there decades ago. It has blocked the river 11 kilometers back, the lake already, and very, very deep, probably over... 30 meters so far so over 100 feet deep so what is going to happen and the problem is you have to imagine not only that the river is blocked upstream but also the risk is downstream and check out here what the latest is the latest pictures anticipating a flood sooner or later we don't know how big it's going to be on the Silkati nation they're bracing for what's to come after a massive landslide dammed the Chilcotin River River in BC's Caribou. Also worried about the people that might have property um, further down in the area. Evacuation orders span 107 square kilometers. There are ecological concerns and fears for human safety. And then, you know, since I'm a farmer, my heart goes out to all the landowners that are along the riverbanks of the Chilcotin River. There's not many residents, but there's farms. There's farms that have cattle, horses, of course. As you can see in the pictures, there's like alfalfa fields and stuff along the river. And if that's going to be flooded, that's devastating. That's a devastating financial loss for these farmers that are already burdened by wildfires and by government and water restrictions and stuff like this in some areas in British Columbia. So I feel for them. Some of them have already evacuated their cattle and uh, we will have to see what turns out. Best case scenario is that we're all hoping that the water might gradually start to slope over that natural dam. That would be the better option, better than if the dam did break. Interior Health has relocated patients from Lillooet to an alternative location as a precautionary measure. Current modeling indicates the water may go over the top instead of bursting through in a sudden rush. If it were to burst, the Chilcotin River would rise well above peak spring runoff. If the dam breaks, it will send quite a lot of water and debris. The debris is the problem because from that landslide, it was an area that had previous wildfires. So dry trees, dry soil, sediments, that's all going down the river. And the Chilcotin River meets with the Fraser River. You see on the map and then it goes down the Fraser River and the Fraser River flows basically Chilliwack and then you, you see it's going down in the lower mainland of Metro Vancouver. They're saying for now that the water levels of the Fraser River will not be affected in a too big way. The Fraser River would be below typical spring peak water levels. If the dam breaks so that there should not be a problem with flooding in the lower mainland. But you know, there's boulders or fissures that are along the Chilcotin River and some of them don't even want to leave. Although there is an evacuation order that has been um, issued yesterday already that say stay out of the area, your life is in danger. And I'll show you a few new clips. But last night, it's about a kilometer long and about 600 meters wide and still 30 meters high. The water is building up behind it. Advisories have been issued urging people to stay away from the Chilcotin and Fraser River banks. Not everyone is adhering. On the Fraser River, north of Hope, one group continues to fish for sturgeon. It's not going to come into 10 minutes. So if something happens there that's catastrophic, we're going to hear about it and it's going to give us lots of time to get off the river today. Captivating photos and pictures what Mother Nature can do. I mean, if you look at that, it is really, really impressive. It's a very large landslide and there's significant hazards associated with this landslide. Real concern is how quickly is that water released? And so they talked a little bit about the fact that water was now seeping through the landslide. That is a bit of a concern where, you know, we'd be worried that the water finds a path through the landslide debris, starts to erode that landslide, and then you get, get sudden collapse and then a much more rapid draining. 
So basically we're waiting right now. How much bigger is this lake going to be? How much larger in terms of how long it'll stretch back upstream and how much will it flood the land there upstream and how deep will it get and when will we reach the point when something's going to happen? In this case, what I think will probably happen is that the water will come up and start to flow across the landslide. It will start to erode through that material. And the real question is, is how fast is that going to happen? Some of you have said in the comments, why didn't they blow it up right away? And I thought about this and I'm like, my first reaction was, yeah, if shortly after the landslide, you would have taken some explosive and formed some, at least a little hole or or trench where the water could flow, could keep continue to flow so that it wouldn't build up this big lake. But then I was thinking since the soil on the river banks on both sides of that landslide is so brittle and crumbled. So if you use explosive, it could trigger another landslide and block it even more. But I'm not an expert on this. Let me know in the comments what you think. I mean, I haven't heard that they have done this in the past. In the past, they have waited for the water to flow over. But this is a bigger dam than it was in the past. So I don't know. I think it's probably better to leave it untouched before it creates even more problem. And they're very worried about the salmon. And I guess if you use an explosion, you're sending maybe even more stuff at once down the river. Is that going to happen in a few hours or a few days? And mm. that has a significant impact on the nature of the hazard downstream for this, you know, rapid onset kind of outburst flood that will occur. Yeah, that's the force of nature. Um, they have also put Lillilet, that's a small community in the area, on alert so that they would be ready to be evacuated. That's further downstream. But also this area had wildfires and they're expecting even more wildfires in the coming days because there's another hot week coming and they say there's going to be a lot of lightning storms that could light up fires there. And you can see there's these dead trees, these black trees that have been burned in a wildfire. They're part of the lake now. Canadian news are, of course, reporting a lot about this. What should we be prepared for then? Well, I think they've said all you need to know. You need to stay away from the river. And, uh, you know, I'm sure it's really tempting to walk down into the Chilcotin River bank right now because it's completely, well, largely devoid. Hmm, sorry, devoid of water, but you, you can't do that because uh, the water can rise very, very rapidly. And so uh, we'll see if it rises enough to uh, affect any uh, houses or infrastructure downstream. The big concern would be the bridge that's over the Chicotan River. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully it's strong enough to withstand these floodwaters uh, that are coming. So guys, let me know if you're in the US, are they reporting about this? Usually Canada is a white spot on the map. If you look at US news, I always find that funny. And for those of you who were worried who have asked, um, I am safe here, I'm high up, I'm not in any flood zone. So those guys are not at risk. So, but my heart goes out to everyone who is in a dangerous zone, but thanks for asking guys. But you know, look at this, you can see in these pictures, you can see the green fields on the banks of the rivers. And if I look at Google Earth, there you can see where there are settlements along the river. So here by this bridge that you see on the map, that's basically the area where it happens. And then if you look upstream, you can see some farms. Okay, I have that piece of horse poop here big in the picture. I should cover this so now it looks way nicer. So let's have a look upstream. You can see farms here. And then you can see fields here. So they're at risk from the lake that is forming. But also if we look downstream, they could be at risk from flooding. So if you go further down, there's farms as well. And usually where the river merges with the Fraser River in a spectacle, people go there to watch it because it's massive water masses. It's very impressive and you see two different colors of water are mixing with each other. 
The BC government has released an update today and their estimate is that they expect the water to overtop the landslide tonight, August 4th, or early tomorrow on August 5th. Since that landslide has blocked the Tilkatin River completely so that no water was able to flow through, what their measurements now show that the water levels of that lake that is forming upstream behind the blockage, the water is rising with 18 centimeters per hour. So that's basically that much per hour. And for a lake that's not supposed to be there, that is a lot, guys. So they think it will still take up to 12 to 24 hours, she agrees, for the water to overtop that dam. They have made like two or 3D models. So that that's their current estimate. And if you, if you look at the pictures here, I mean, it looks quite massive, but it doesn't look like that it's overtopping it as of yet. But... If the worst case scenario happens and that landslide dam breaks, they have updated the worst case scenario flows. And now they're saying these flows would be even greater than they estimated yesterday. But one thing has changed for the worst case scenario. So they have updated that and they said the worst case scenario, the flows would even be greater than they estimated yesterday. Of course, because probably more water has accumulated. But if the worst case scenario happens and that landslide dam breaks and sends all the water all at once down the river, that would be not good. The water of the Chilcotin River could rapidly rise to 21 meters at the Fraser Canyon bridge. So what they're saying is, yeah, it's, it's at the level or at the level when, you know, the spring floods are coming, the spring water, the melt water, but the water will behave differently. And at the Fraser River could be like 12 to 14 meters, but it will behave differently because there's so much debris in there and it's a different kind of water. And that makes it more dangerous. There will be greater momentum and greater force than uh, when we reached normal peaks like that with spring melt because that happens gradually and not immediately. And now here comes the risk. If that happens and the water suddenly starts flowing, there is risk for more landslides, not only downstream, but also upstream. And that's why it's so important that people are staying away from the river. So the government says they're preparing for all possible outcomes because they cannot guarantee that their modeling is correct. So guys, if you like this video and if you like topics like this, check out my channel and subscribe. And if you're a, a regular viewer, please leave this video a like. And we're waiting for the volcano in Iceland to have the next eruption. Italy is rumbling. Etna just exploded again last night. Check out the videos in the end screen. There's another video about the Chilcotin River as well and lots of other stuff. So I hope to see you there very, very soon. I have to take care of those guys now. I've got to fill up the waters. I've got to check the waters and I'll see you soon, guys. Bye-bye.